Hello all you crazy computer kids. Somehow we're still talking about early 80s microcomputers, 40 years after they showed up on the scene. And the TI-99 foray of all things. How is that even possible? In any case, I hope your interest in this stuff extends to coding, because that's what I want to talk about today. Today it's TI Basic for TI-99 foray. If you started programming on a TI-99 4A, BASIC will have been where it all began. For that's certainly where it all started for me, anyway. Turn on a TI-99, and your first option past the boot screen is TI BASIC. Your second option might be, well, whatever you've got in the cartridge slot right now. But number one is TI BASIC. Or to put it another way, number two's probably whatever software you bought. But number one is your permanent built-in tool for creating your very own software. Or copying it over from a magazine. All at no cost to you. So that seems like a pretty great deal. Though, in practice, it might or might not be. Because if you're playing Parsec on the one hand and, well, coding TI Basic games on the other, it's going to become evident very, very quickly that there's no way to create action like that, or graphics like that, or sound like that, Headshot. in BASIC. I think I'm still a bit traumatized by that childhood experience of realizing what you can't do with TI BASIC. But I don't think that means we should write it off today. Because these days, if you're using a four-decade-old computer, then clearly your priority is not reducing technical limitations. If you're here at this point, then probably facing crazy unreasonable limitations head-on is more up your alley. And crazy limitations are very much on offer in TI BASIC. <laughs> So, lucky us. But before we talk about the cool stuff TI Basic can do and the crazy things it can't, let's talk about what TI Basic as an environment actually is. Into TI Basic. And the first thing you're going to see if you pick option 1 on booting a TI-99 is naturally going to be the TI Basic command prompt here. From here, you can type lines in to add them to your program, you can list the contents of your program, or load, save, and modify your program as needed. So it's a line editor, but it's also the closest thing the system has to a general purpose command line. Which means there are two overlapping sets of commands here, really. Some commands, like read, are only available inside a program. Since you need data lines to read, for that to actually do anything while other commands, like old, can only be used outside a program, since that loads a program from storage, which isn't going to be useful if one's already running. So most commands, like read, are just the basic commands you'd expect from any microcomputer basic. But a few other commands TI Basic gives you, like that old there, really aren't what you'd expect to see from a microcomputer basic of this era. TI Basic. TI Basic arrives on the microcomputer market with the 99.4 in 1979, and very little changed in the upgrade to the 99.4A two years later. There are differences, and if you want to hear about those, then you can watch my video on the 99.4, but I won't get into those here. Regardless, TI Basic's origins go back further than 1979. Since before TI sold the 99.4, they were already selling mini-computers and had been for the whole of the 70s. And BASIC was naturally a feature of those systems, alongside Fortran and COBOL. What we know about those computers confirms a couple things about TI's approach to BASIC on the TI-99. First off, late 70s mini-computer versions of TI BASIC were based off Dartmouth BASIC, the granddaddy of all the BASICs. TI says that outright in their late 70s TI-990 docs. Second, TI BASIC evolved in the same direction Dartmouth BASIC itself did, towards ANSI BASIC. TI says that outright 
in their early 80s TI-990 docks. In the end, you can see the Dartmouth Basic heritage of TI Basic all the way through to the end of the TI-99 era, with by being the command to exit the basic environment, with old being the command to load a saved program, with ampersand being used to concatenate strings, and with seg used to segment strings. All of those are Dartmouth basic things that you just don't tend to see anywhere else on micros of the early 80s, with Microsoft basic having set the trend most other places. So for me, this ends up being just one more way the TI-99 is a system weirdly caught between 70s mini-computer and 80s microcomputer worlds. It's got a mini-computer CPU in the 9900 with design features that don't really make a lot of sense in a home computer context and make it pretty different from the other micros of its time. And it's got a BASIC in TI BASIC that was based on those TI mini-computer BASICs, with those based on Dartmouth BASIC in turn. So, BASIC is like a whole lot else about the TI-99. It's debatable whether any of it's good, but at least it sure makes it different. And that makes it interesting, to me anyway. Ultimately, there are both good and bad things about how BASIC ended up being implemented on the TI-99. But first off, let's get the bad stuff out of the way. Alright, well you probably knew this one was coming. TI BASIC is slow. And that's for pretty fundamental reasons baked into the TI-99 design. So I'm afraid there's not much to be done about it. The main issue here being TI BASIC is mostly written in GPL. It's an 8-bit language handled by what amounts to a virtual machine in TI-99 ROM, the GPL interpreter. Most of TI's first-party software is written in GPL, and it really is the native language of the TI-99, even more than the 9900 assembly it's written in. But while GPL is the language of a lot of legacy TI software, it doesn't get much use today. In modern homebrew, TI basic dialects are really the only place you see it used widely. As bytecode fed to a virtual machine, GPL can just never be as fast as native machine code. Instead of speed, its upside is that it's a lot more compact than pure machine language would be. And in 1979, economizing on memory was a pretty high priority. So using GPL meant that, in principle, DI could wedge more code and features into any given command module. That was arguably good for TI Extended BASIC in the end, and let it fit more features in than a ROM card of pure machine language ever could have. But even without the benefit of that Extended BASIC card, TI managed to pack a pretty solid feature set into the BASIC on the main board. So let's talk about the good news where TI BASIC's concerned. He upside to TI BASIC. And one good thing about TI BASIC to start off with here is its pretty rich support for file systems. The upshot of that being, even before the TI-99 4A released, in 1980 you had the 99.4 running TI's Super Star Trek game, TI Trek, off a disc, and reading speech samples from a file on demand, during play, all in TI BASIC. Going into warp now. And that shows off another nice feature of TI BASIC, its sound capabilities. With three voices and two noise types available to you, TI BASIC gives you a pretty rich sound generation feature set for its time. You access those features with a call sound command by specifying pitch and attenuation for each. And away you go. Easy to use and simple enough for anybody to understand. So naturally, there was a lot of playing around with those sound capabilities by TI BASIC programmers in the 80s. But clearly the biggest feature out of the starting gate for the TI-99 was graphics. 
It supported 256 by 192 pixel, 15 color display, with a lot of really vivid colors on that palette. TI Basic sets that up to give you a character table of 16 sets of 8 characters. Each of those 16 sets can have its own palette, and all the characters can be user redefined. So there's quite a bit you can do with that. If you're writing a program that isn't a music demo or something, you'll probably also want to accept user input at some point. And for that, you've got Call Key to check for key input, and Call Joist to check for joystick input. So you're covered as far as the game input needs go, too. But designing a graphical action game in TI Basic does come with some big challenges, both due to the speed of the thing and due to the tools it gives you. So, while it can be done, you're going to have to find every possible opportunity to optimize and cut corners. A peek into the limits of TI Basic. The first thing most basic programmers will look for when they want to sneak all the way around the limitations of a basic are commands to read or write memory locations or execute machine language programs and subroutines from them a peek or a poke or a load or what have you. Well, TI Basic doesn't have them. But that's not so much an omission on the part of the language as it is just the nature of the architecture. Your entire Basic program and its graphics data is in private VDP memory the CPU cannot address. And with only 256 bytes of 16-bit RAM it can address, most of which is being used, there just isn't enough real estate here for poking or loading machine language programs into memory. It's not so much that the TI-99 doesn't want your running machine language programs, though that may also be true to an extent, but more so it's just that, well, there's nowhere to put them. So without machine language routines to speed up things like screen pattern updates, well, you're going to have to be clever with the tools you've got. Because the truth is, Basic graphics are pretty basic. Like I said earlier, DI Basic gives you 128 patterns, and those can have up to 16 different palettes. All of them can be defined however you like. For any patterns you want to redefine, you'll do it with the call care command. And for any palettes you want to change, you can set those with the call color command. Then when you've redefined your characters and your palettes, you can write them to the screen with three different commands for doing that. Print is of course going to scroll the screen and write whatever values or strings you specify in the command at the bottom. So in a game context that can be good for a one tile at a time scroll. That's useful for making racing or skiing games, and skiing games especially, since, well, when you're scrolling from the bottom, scrolling down a mountain just makes more sense. A racing game is scrolling that way just feels a bit backwards. Otherwise, call vcare and call hcare are your tools for writing one or more copies of a character to a vertical or horizontal line anywhere on the screen. So animations are mostly done in one of three ways either changing the pattern of a character already on screen with call care, or writing new characters to screen to replace the old ones, or changing the palette values of characters with call color. You can also change the background color of the entire screen with call screen, though you'll only be able to see the screen background for any tiles which have transparent backgrounds themselves. Everything you want to accomplish visually is going to have to be done in one of those ways. Which is to say, the system's support for sprites is nowhere to be seen in this version of BASIC. Another implication there is, you don't have any access to the system's other graphics modes. Either bitmap mode, where every screen pattern can be unique and every 8 pixel tile can have its own palette. Or multicolor mode, where your resolution falls dramatically, but every pixel is unique. But if you wanted to use advanced graphics programming, you probably wouldn't be using BASIC. So that's probably all right. If, however, you do want to use BASIC while also accessing a few of the cooler features of the TI-99, 
Well, there are some options available. One of the first examples of TI Basic Programming I gave here was TI Trek. And conspicuously, that was using Speech Synth. Red alert, play on in quadrant. Which isn't something supported by TI Basic. The explanation there being, TI Trek was written to be used with the TI Speech Editor cartridge. Plug that in, and TI Basic gets a call say command and it can load speech samples either from disk or from ROM. Hello. So with the help of CART software, TI Basic does get to expand its feature set. And two really key cartridges that add to the command set in big ways are Mini Memory and Editor Assembler. Those give you options for developing an assembly, of course. But they also add TI Basic commands to peek and poke both CPU memory and VDP memory. So you've got full access to all memory areas with those new commands, and you can even now include assembly subroutines in your BASIC programs. But back to speech in TI BASIC, a subject near and dear to my heart. Another really great addition in that area comes via the Terminal Emulator 2 cartridge. That gives you even more powerful TI speech routines in TI BASIC. Call say from the speech editor cart can play a sample from disk or ROM, as I say. Hello. But TE2's allophone speech can let you generate almost any English speech sound at all in TI Basic. <laughs> and that's definitely kept me entertained far longer than it probably should have. Making nonsense like this. There are times when all the world is asleep. So those additions were definitely nice, especially for us speech synth nerds. But for most people, the moment TI Basic really came of age was the moment they got an extended Basic card. With Extended Basic, we get some more big additions, but sprites are the headliner. XP also comes with peek and poke type commands, and adds the call say command from the speech editor card. Good work. Plus, it lets you add assembly subroutines to your programs. It is missing a couple of things that are available elsewhere. It doesn't give you poke v and peek v for peeking and poking VDP memory, like mini memory and editor assembler did. And it also doesn't give you Terminal Emulator 2's powerful speech routines. So some programs using speech did stay in TI Basic in the long term, for the sake of access to that. With the ability to add assembly subroutines, though, you can in principle add all of that back in yourself, if you've got the necessary routines. And even the TE2 routines were out there if you knew where to look. But assembly aside, another really nice feature of XB is, you can now call basic programs from within basic programs. So this gets used quite a bit in the biggest basic programs out there. A game like Legends 2 passes control back and forth between a pile of XP programs running the different parts of the game, making it possibly the largest extended basic program ever. In all, the program files contain 4,648 extended basic statements, by my count anyway, which is crazy. Extended basic really improved things and made TI basic what it always should have been. And it's come a long way since, too. Modern dialects have kept on adding new features and capabilities over the years, like Rich Gilbertson's RxB, for example, which improves execution speed in a lot of areas across the board, and can even run basic programs which aren't XB compatible. The modern revolution in extended basic programming arrived in 2014, though, with the Extended Basic Game Developers Package from Harry Wilhelm. Harry had earlier in TI history created the first set of support routines for using bitmap mode graphics in Extended Basic, the missing link. But in recent years, the XB Game Developers Package, nowadays part of the XBGEM package, has gone a lot further. 
Like the missing link, it adds powerful support routines for developing XB games and demos. But, most importantly, it added support for compiling your basic programs to get blazingly fast object code when you're finished. So that's where we stand in the present day. You can write your code and test it in plain old TI Basic, and if you're not exactly happy with the result in Basic itself, compile it for a huge speed boost. With that option, we've seen lots of new compiled Basic programs come out which can finally offer the arcade action gaming everyone always wanted to make happen on their TI-99. But with the design all done quickly and easily in TI Basic. It also led to compiled versions of older TI Basic games being shared in the community. So you can play the classic Basic games, still on original hardware, but with none of the laggy input handling and slow screen writes of the original. So a good compiled basic is an incredible addition to the platform. But still, part of me can't help but feel that... Suffering builds character. There's really something to be said for the challenge of making a game work with a weird and limited tool set. And as I say, what the hell do we come to these computers for at this point, if not for that? It's just really neat to see how a design like Adventure Mania directly builds on the limitations of a basic like this one, and makes something that looks and acts like a graphic adventure, in spite of everything. And it's also nice to be able to load up a program and play it and look at the code and see why it works the way it does, and maybe even tweak it a little bit. A world with nothing but compiled code doesn't really offer that. There are still basic games doing cool things. So I'm always delighted to see a new TI basic game like Lasergate here, which got posted to Atari Age earlier this year. And if you want to take TI basic to new places by embedding machine code in a TI basic program, these days, at long last, you can even do that with the help of the Playground package, used by Harry Wilhelm's TI Basic version of Conway's Game of Life here. An exploit the TI world probably very much could have used in 1981, but we have it now. The unexpanded TI-99 still only has 256 bytes of CPU RAM, and much of that's spoken for. Playground makes a max of 114 bytes, or 57 words of memory, available for a machine language program. But it does make it possible for a TI basic program loaded from cassette to run assembled code. Anyway, I feel like I should undertake a new TI basic project myself. I've mostly used extended basic in recent years, and I'd like to see the legacy of type-in programs live on. What TI basic programs did you write back in the day? Or did you have a favorite type-in you got from the magazines? Tell me about it. I may have to do a video on some top TI basic programs for their own sake down the line. Thanks for watching, folks. This is Pixel Pedant saying bye. Because in the world of TI basic, that's what we do.